Welcome back, chess friends. Le Bourdonnais leads McDonnell eight games to two. It's the first to 11 wins, so let's see how they get on in, in this game. We have d4, d5, c4, so the queen's gambit, which McDonald accepts. e3, e5, bishop captures on c4, and e captures, e captures, and knight f6. So, so far, it's all the same moves as we saw in the last queen's gambit, but here, Le Bourdonnais decides to diverge from what went before. Previously, he played his knight to f3, but this time he goes knight to c3 instead. And McDonald, instead of going to d6 with his bishop, goes to e7. And the game continues, knight to f3 now, and then castles and h3. Maybe Le Bourdonnais is worrying about the knight coming to this square. So this, this stops it. We have c6, bishop to e3, uh, continuing to develop, bishop to f5, um, this bishop is on a good square, but it's undefended. So um, this being the, the 19th century, uh, Le Bourdonnais just destroys his own king's side by pushing his pawn and challenging the bishop. So the bishop retreats back to g6. Uh, MacDonald says, fine. And we have knight to e5. And now knight on b to d7, uh, furthering MacDonald's development. And the knight captures the bishop on g6. H captures now. Uh, now we have quite a sparse uh, wing file here. h4. And MacDonald brings his knight in to attack the bishop here. So the bishop retreats. And MacDonald immediately follows up with his other knight. And Le Bourdonnais kind of ignores it and pushes up the wing. And this causes Morphy to wake up. Morphy says, White pursues the attack with vigor and determination. Well, okay, Morphy. And the game continues with the knight here capturing the bishop, and it's captured back by the pawn. And now bishop to h4 with check. And Morphy is really earning his keep today. This is his second and last comment. He says, This check serves only to advance white's game. g5 would have warded off the attack for some time. Well, with the benefit of futuristic technology, we can now say that this is actually a pretty bad move that Morphy recommends. Um, he's actually usually very good, but in this case, no. Um, this actually uh, is even worse than this, this check. Um, if he wanted to even out the game, he could have captured here, which is the move best recommended by the engine. But just to see how bad this push here is, I'll just take you through the line. It goes g5 as recommended by Morphy, queen to d3 and then we could have queen to d6 and now um, castling on the queen side and we might continue with c5 and now pushing h6. So with a capture then uh, Le Bourdonnais would be able to bring his bishop up here, uh, sorry up here, <laughs> back next to the king and of course this is doubling up along this very dangerous diagonal and it seems that um, the engine expects uh, a win from the Bordenay in this position. You can see the, the, the force of the bishop and the queen and uh, the rook combined here. It's going to be a lot of trouble for McDonnell. But that's not what happened. What actually happened, as we said, was bishop to h4 with check. So the game continues with the king moving out of the way to d2. But um, this isn't such a great move. It doesn't fully blunder the game or anything, but it would have been better to go to e2 instead and we'll see why in a couple of moves time so king to d2 and we continue with the pawn captures and the queen comes to f3 and now the bishop comes back to g5 and now you'll see what i mean about the king being on the wrong square here uh, the bishop is now pinning this pawn so the queen uh, is eyeing up this pawn which is looking extremely weak um, so what happens? What does Le Bourdonnais do? Well, he plays the best move as recommended by the engine, rook on a to f1, and he just lets MacDonald capture this pawn. And now the king moves out of the way. We have queen back to f6, and the rook captures on f5. And now um, there is an offer of a queen exchange here, and actually MacDonald, MacDonald's best chance would have been to go for this queen exchange because he is winning in terms of uh, material. But he doesn't. He goes for the check on g6. And now we have um, e4 blocking. Uh, knight to d5, because now this pawn is pinned. This is the knight's free to come here. 
The rooks double up along the wing file here, actually threatening checkmate on the back rank, but MacDonald, of course, spots it and blocks with his bishop, saying, what are you going to do now? And Labordne just pushes the pawn here. And now uh, MacDonald can't capture it back, because it'll just hang the checkmate. Uh, he can't capture it with the queen, because he'll just lose the queen. So what does he do? Well, he decides to try to make something with the f-pawn, but uh, Labordne just captures the knight, Pawn captures back and the bishop captures, uh, leaving the black king in check. So it's looking quite grim for the black king now. Uh, he moves aside to h7. And now what does Labordne do? He's got a choice of capturing the bishop with the pawn or the rook. Um, the result is pretty much the same either way, but Labordne actually goes with the rook here. So that's check. He captures back with the pawn and the rook captures, um, checking uh, the king and he's going to be able to claim the queen here. So. The, the queen captures, the pawn captures, and MacDonald is on his last gasp here. Just a desperate move, captures the pawn, revealing a t an attack on the queen. But uh, Le Bourdonnais just moves it out of the way to h5. And now that's quite enough for MacDonald. He resigns the game and he, he says to Le Bourdonnais, have another point, well done. Uh, you've got so many, I wish I had some. And he goes off to his room to uh, consider about what, it, <laughs> where and where he went wrong. And Le Bourdonnais, of course, stays up all night drinking and gambling with his friends. So thank you very much for joining me for game 15, and I'll see you again next time.